stacked with a bunch of business cards um, that turned into my email list. Um, so now I've lost out all of my events that I do to what started off as a thousand business cards now has equated to 11,000 contacts. So um, there's value in it. There's a lot of people who I meet just one time and I like would throw their card in the bag. Um, so I was like, well, if I never meet this person again, at least if I can get some of these people that are valuable into the same space, how much magic could happen through that. So that's pretty much how Georgia got started. Outside of that, I work at Clear Channel Outdoors. So we do um, all the billboard advertising that says Clear Channel. We do um, mobile caring. Um, and yeah, we help companies with marketing campaigns. So we have, again, Ms. Tara Sills, who's um, actually going to be talking about her book and how to monetize your skills. Um, there's snacks over here. So there's chips, cupcakes. Please feel free to help yourselves. Um, even as she's speaking, there's lemonade and stuff like that. Um, but I actually would like for you to introduce yourself and then you can go into um, your presentation. Well, good evening, everyone. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. <clears throat> so I'm very excited to be in this space because I am the type of person that believes in solutions. Do you ever, do you have a friend or maybe a family member or whomever, associate, business associate, colleague, that goes on and on and on and on and on about the problem? but never can figure out the solution, even when you present them. Anybody? Am I the only person that knows not? Okay. Today. Today. Okay. How many times? How many times, right. So I believe in talking about the solutions opposed to talking about the problem. Because obviously, it has been pointed out what the problem is, right? So when you're trying to monetize your skills, this is something that you're doing with the ability and talents that you already possess that you're just trying to acquire to cre create another stream of income, uh, like the young man said in the back. His business is basically automated, which I think is very smart. There's so many different systems out here why, nowadays, why not utilize them? Right now, while I'm standing before you, my company, Body Decor Boutique, is making money because every system that it possesses is automated. Even the question, if I'm not available, then I can tap into Zendesk. Does anyone know what Zendesk is? Zendesk is a source that you can utilize for your customer service. So that's the person that can answer the phone while you're out there getting other deals because 90% of your day should be spent doing what? Growing your business. Growing your business and making money. So we have to learn how to do what? Delegate. Which is something that's very hard to do. It's kind of like giving someone your whole baby, right? So I want, you, I want to start off with this before I go into the workshop. But the workshop today is called Bossy is Bossy Does, How to Monetize Your Skills. And I, Tara Seals, am the Bossy Educator. I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee. I have been living in Atlanta for over 15 years now. I'm also a special needs educator as well as a, uh, so, so, uh, a social emotional awareness volunteer for the Georgia Department of Juvenile Justice. I have worked with students ages six to 78 from elementary school, middle school, high school, alternative school, 24 hour residential facility to the collegiate level alternative school as well as special needs. And when I walk into these classrooms, over 70% of the students are black males. What are we going to do to solve the problem? It's enough of talking about it, marching about it, having conversations at dinner about it. Ooh, I just don't know, well girl, all right, well, I'll talk to you tomorrow. And then it's the same conversation again. I see parents of public school students at Title I schools, meaning that, what, 99% or more of them do not have, have less than, in under, undeserved, unloved situations. Just a lot of unwanted children in this world. But people are having them in some situations, and not all, but every one of us in our families have that one child that you know was born because of something else. And it may be you. But it's important that we're honest with ourselves and know, we're, know what we're about and what we stand for in order to move to the next level. Because to me, money is easy to make. Relationships are not. And relationships is what's going to bring the money, not your product. You may be selling something that somebody is really not interested in, but they like you, so they're buying your product. They're buying you, not your product. So we have to be very clear with our relationships. And oftentimes, we can't be clear with our relationships because you're not bossy. Bossy is as bossy does, meaning you are the boss of yourself. 
You are the boss of yourself. Bossy is about doing. Does. Bossy is as bossy does. This is what you do. I shouldn't have to tell you you bossy. You should already know that you bossy because that's how you walk. It's just like a Christian. Oh, girl, you know I go to church Monday through Sunday. And because I would rather pick that up myself opposed to you telling me. This is like uh, my reviews. I have over 2,500 reviews for my boutique, bodydecorboutique.com. You can go onto the Instagram page. All the information is there. Nothing to hide. But the issue is this. The reason why it's more important for somebody else to speak on your behalf than you is because of what? Of course you're going to promote yourself. And of course you're the bond to everybody else, right? But deep down inside, you're dealing with some internal bullshit. And bossy is as bossy does is about you being the bossy yourself. We can solve everybody else's problems but our own. Girl, you need to leave him. You know he ain't talking about nothing. That financial plan of business you got, it's going to be gone in a year. That house you want to buy, they have 15 bits on it. You ain't going to get it. They can tell you everything that's wrong. Have you ever talked to a person and 90% of the conversation is negative? You know what I do in those conversations? I'll be like, well, damn, what happened positive to that? Nothing, because from the uh, 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 point of the conversation of, of begin to the middle and to almost the end, where I just can't take it no more, it's been about something negative. But once you truly become the boss of yourself and you able to face yourself in the mirror, those, those, those things that only you know, y'all know what I'm talking about, I ain't by myself up in here, okay? On those things that you know that you're dealing with, something internal that you have not masked on the outside. We know how to put on that makeup and get us some extensions and go get our hair uh, shaved and uh, 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 groomed in to make it seem like it's not something going on when it really is. But those relationships only come when you're able to have the relationship with yourself first. How do you bypass you to go to help somebody else? So you love them more or do you love you more? Your only focus is to remain focused. Getting, having, and keeping your shit together is priority. With vision, you can concentrate on what's ahead and carry out the purpose within you. Don't allow your dreams to just be that, dreams. Acknowledge every card in your deck and own it. Show the cards life has dealt you and play the shit out of your hand. You will win some and you will lose some, but defeat is not an option. Two words, bounce back. Remember, the only person that can be you is you. Welcome to Bossy is Bossy Does, How to Monetize Your Skills. I want you to think of everything that it is you can possibly do to make money off of. We got to figure it out, y'all. We have kids coming to school with no uniforms. They wait. They mama is hot girl summer all summer. But come August, they ain't got no school supplies. Daddy uh, buying Camaros, drop tops, and popping wheelies all summer. But his kid is at school with his shoes and heels hanging out of shoes. You all know it starts on the outside. If you go and get groomed, you feel good about yourself, right? The same thing with kids. Well, in order to monetize your skills, though, you have to not only know that this is something that you can sell, but you also have to look the part. So if somebody's trying to sell me, uh, uh, the fact that they're a hairstylist and your head nappy. Am I going to come sit in your chair? If you're telling me that you paint houses and I ride by your crib in the chip thing, do you think I'm going to hire you? It, it's time out for us thinking about oh, well, it's a black owned business, so what? We, you have to understand that in order to get the respect, you have to give yourself the respect first. So let's look at the essential question of the night. How do the tasks you perform in your current role, which that may be the current role as an entrepreneur or as a CEO of your company or as a employee, employee, uh, employee or an employer, okay, with being aligned with the CEO founder and the boss. So how do the tasks you perform in your current role align with being a CEO founder and the boss? So how many people we have in here that are not entrepreneurs? How many people in here want to own new businesses outside of the businesses they currently own? Outside of them, okay. Why do you want to open that new business? 
Um, I want to open my new business so, you know, I can be my own boss. Also, so I can help employ other people. Being that I've been, you know, an employee for so long, I feel like, you know, I know exactly what employees want. I would be more of a, you know, benefit to the person. Thank you. Okay. And you said that you want to be a boss. What do you, what do you think a boss What What is, what is a day mm-hmm. in boss land look like to you or your perspective of that? Um, being able to give back to my community, to be able to teach my employees, not only, you know, give them a paycheck, but, um, you know, being able to educate as well as, you know, serve. Anyone else want to share? Why are you looking for, are you looking for another mother, another uh, string of income? And if you are, why? I know you're why, you share it with us. Do you have another one? Maybe? Okay. I would open up a dog park, this oh. one near me, uh-huh. and they make a chilling up the bar. Oh. The one that's right on Decatur? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I was in the area and I used to drop by and I was like, whack. Mm-hmm. This is the winter time. The time spring came, I saw a jam packed at 10 30 in the morning. Right. Rolled by 10 30 at night, still packed. Killing so it. now you gotta get you a spot. I mean, out. I know I got a spot, but Good. it costs like 1.7 million, so I'm trying to figure out how to. So when I was working, I was at this level. I'm doing my business up here. Right. But that level is like. Well, you can get, we have some financial people in the room, so maybe you can get a connection. <laughs> that's what we're here for. We gotta, that's one of the chapters in my book. Open your damn mouth. Because nobody can nobody read your mind. Unfortunately, it's not an app for that. I can't go up to your brain and figure out what you're thinking. And also, um, yes. like when I started my business, I found out I got to go to the church a lot more now, and I figured out God will bless you, not to bless you, but to bless the people you hire that need a job. That's true. So I think that's why my position that comes when I started a business because all my employees needed a job. Mm-hmm. One was out of work for two years. One was working eight hours a week, two jobs, hating it, mm-hmm. and I got all of them in, and they loving it so. I thought it was a blessing for me was really to help other people. That's right. And true. I found out God don't just give you a blessing just to help you. It's for you to help other people. That's the whole reason. Yeah. That's the whole reason. So that's the main reason. You're just a vessel. Yeah. He gonna, he's going to use you in two ways. Either a bridge or a full stool. So you decide. Mm-hmm. Either a bridge. So a bridge does what? Connect. Connect. Hold people up. Okay, one part may be leaning a little bit like, hold on, brother, hold on, sister, you know? But a footstool does what? Because even if you don't help your brother, sister, because that's what we're in the room for, you never know who is in the room with the answer to your question. That's the reason why we have to make sure that we speak up. And I tell my students that all the time. I teach special needs students, and sometimes people feel like, don't get asked a lot of questions. Well, how do children learn other than asking questions? I know I ask my parents a million questions. So if you're not patient, maybe you don't need to have none. Let's tell the truth about it. Because it's not something that you have to have. It's a choice. Yeah. And another thing, uh, he went to the gathering spot. I went to an event they had a couple weeks ago, and the owner of it was saying, out of all his accomplishments with the gathering spot, his biggest accomplishment was hiring, having 100 people, staff, all black people working. And I was like, wow. Making payroll is yeah. something electrifying. Yeah. The fact that, that somebody else is depending, I don't care if it's five dollars a month. Yeah. If if you are paying payroll and you able to make that payroll, it is an electrifying experience because this person is depending on you to do something after they've done something for you. It's called loyalty. Yeah. yeah. Which unfortunately sometimes we run into those that are not. And what I always say, when you run into that situation, what do you do? Just like in basketball, when they run into a situation, they do what? Pivot. You got to pivot. You got to change it up in order to create movement again. Yes, go ahead. Michelle, I'm out of the So one of my employees, so she's been working this job for 12 years. Like, she's almost 60. She left her job to come work for me. Can you imagine the conversation? She was of another race. Of her telling her friends she about to quit her job. The car work with somebody in their 30s. I know they was like, are you crazy? But, you know, things work out. And, mm-hmm. You know, 
Well, you know, what's for you is for you, no yeah. matter how crazy it is. Yeah, that's the, uh, and that's the reason why we can't too. share yeah. our dreams and our deepest thoughts about our businesses and where we want to soar to and go to with empty people. Yeah. You can't. You can't. They, they won't even find nothing for themselves to fill themselves up. What they going to help you with? Okay. So let's look at identifying your personal interests, talents, and skills. So let's put some things in your mind. So this uh, chart here, you don't have to fill it out tonight, I just want, I'm just using it as a visual. But look at the uh, column of interest, talents, and the skills. And think about what it is that you have within you that you possess. It may be something as, as small as being able to have a great handwriting. There are people that are out here making money, y'all, on handwriting. I go to a lot of different events. When I first started my boutique, I had a 10 by 10 space at the flea market. People, girl, she had her boutique at the flea market, but y'all, you would have thought she had stepped up in a, a fifth plaza somewhere. I had the dressing room, it was nice and neat. I had bought this beautiful uh, velvet material, made the dressing room out of. I had little cushions, I made my floor black and white, I painted it. It was gorgeous. And it was mine. For three hundred dollars a month, and I was able to make that three hundred dollars in three hours, and I only worked Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and I had my mom and my friend's daughter on payroll. One day, I'm in San Francisco on business. My mom calls me and says, "Tara, they are about to close this place." I was like, "Closing? What are you talking about?" She said, the whole place is being shut down due to embezzlement. You have to get your things out of here within 24 hours. Fortunately, my flight was leaving back to San Francisco the next day. I had to go in, get all of my uh, products that I had insured, by the way, which is something that's very important, those of you that have products, to insure your products. Because obviously, if you insure your products, something happens, then you can get the money back for the inventory that you had to replace it. Uh, but... Fortunately, I was able to get it in and get it out, and I never reopened a space again. So I went from having a 10, 10 by 10 in the flea market, and I was paying $92 a weekend. Then I went to that $300 place that was a permanent location, okay? And now everything is on e-commerce. And I said, I'll never open a brick and mortar again. You know why? Because what I realized is sometimes in our business, we buy shit too soon. Mm-hmm. Can anybody share an experience about buying shit too soon? If you bought that car too soon, that house too soon, that boo too soon, some of us buying boo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anybody want to share an experience about buying something too soon? You thought you was ready for it, but you really weren't ready for it? Well, it wasn't the fact that I wasn't ready for it. Let me tell you what it is. It's the management of people. When you have a brick and mortar location, I tell people all the time that want to jump into, girl, I'm going to give me this salon. And this. Well, you know, have you thought about the salon suite? You can go get you a nice space, promote your business, not deal with the other foolishness sometimes to come in there with 10 chairs in the salon and think about other opportunities. Sometimes we, we, we move too quick. And once I did that, they actually did me a favor. That's what I mean by the, the bridge and the footstool. They did me a favor. They were a footstool for me. They were embezzling, which was what? Corrupt, illegal, et cetera. My mama was frantic. I was frantic. My business erupted, uh, uh, erupted closed. But I had it online. So I'm glad that uh, Elizabeth mentioned the, e the email list. I'm just kind of sidebarring for a minute because I just want to save this piece. But the email list is very important. When Instagram shut down, I was still able to connect with my people. You can use MailChimp. Uh, anybody know some other ones? I like MailChimp specifically. Uh, GoDaddy. GoDaddy. Uh, what was the other one? Event Bright That was kind of like the old one. Um, it's another really, really good one that I'm going to think of it by the end. But um, make sure that you're able to connect with your people. Because Instagram is theirs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Facebook, Pinterest, is theirs. But your mail list is yours. And always make sure that you kind of have it downloaded somewhere else too because they can kind of get scared too. I had a situation with that. Okay, so with the uh, interests, talents, and skills, there are things that will pique your curiosity, your uh, attention, your special natural. You may be able to sing, play the piano, 
Any any musicians in here? Not one. I'm the only trumpet play piano player in the you play trumpet. Huh? You play trumpet. You play trumpet. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, who can sew? Who can draw? Who can um uh, uh prep meals? Okay, you got some people. Who can mow a lawn? Rake leaves. <laughs> <laughs> because this is what we gotta understand. I have, I have, I have. I'm, I'm all degreed up to, you know. Uh, corporate is not my thing though, because I'm, I'm, I'm not a funny player. Just not a funny player. It's, I don't like the people that do. I have friends that are amazing at it, and I go to events with them. I'm like, girl, what are you doing? You know, but everybody is blessed in different ways, right? But I go in and train corporate people, though, mm. and teach them how to be real. Yeah. Hmm, the irony. But it's very important that everything that you haunt, if you're a good driver, why not drive for lift? If you're trying to go on that trip and give your children exposure, Exposure. I have children that have never seen downtown Atlanta, but they live in the cave. What? Because we'd rather put some tennis shoes on instead of save that little forty dollars and get that train ride. Y'all, I, I, I didn't hit the train ride before and went somewhere. Mega bus. I didn't did that before. I was broke. I was trying to get to a business meeting, and that business deal created a five thousand uh, dollar revenue for me per month for a six year contract. I wasn't gonna say, well, I ain't gotta wait. I'm too cute to get on the mega bus. No, you ain't. Who you supposed to be? It, it's gonna be real ugly when you can't pay that mortgage. You know? And we also have to think about, too, the different things that you have learned on the job. You go and sit in all these professional developments and sit there and we be all nice and you know what I'm talking about. I ain't the only one. And they're giving you information that it's like, well, I'm just. This information is just uh, old. It's you know all this antiquated information. Y'all done paid these people twenty five thousand dollars. Come tell y'all this. I could, but you don't want to pay your people, but you pay the outside people. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So the information that you're learning on your job, if you're a project, if you're good at being project management, it's this uh, tool called IC Project. Matter of fact, it's on one of my slides. IC the letters I and C and Project.com. Matter of fact, they do have a free pricing option as well. You can keep up with all your projects that you're working on. You don't have to work for a company to do project management. You're doing project management when you're talking to, what's your name, sir? Jason. When you're talking to Jason, when you're talking to Ernie, you're doing project management. I'm talking, okay, I'm going to, I talked to, I met Ernie on this day. This is his phone number, email contact. Me and Ernie will connect later about da 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 in November. Boom. I talked to Jason about an opportunity. Uh, he's going to connect me with his, my, with his friends. I'm waiting on an email back. Boom. And so you just go on there and you organize yourself with your projects. That's something else that's, you know, going on with us as well sometimes as entrepreneurs. We are so creative. We got so many different things going on that we want to do, but it's not organized. Sometimes you got to organize the chaos. Does that make sense? All right. Also, your skills, the ability to do one's knowledge or practice. You may be a lawyer, but not an attorney. Do you know why? Anybody know why? You're not an attorney until you pass the bar. You can graduate from law school and get a JD, and you're a lawyer. But you're not an attorney until you pass the bar. So if you are a lawyer and you didn't pass the bar, should you still be practicing law? Can you? Yes. Maybe you need to be creative in what you're doing. Sometimes we're doing it in a real boring way. And then you know why? I call ages six to 78. And there's two reasons why people do not do the things that they really want to do. One, because they're lazy. Most of the people that come to my workshops and get information, they don't use it. If you all hyped up the first, it's, it's enough, it's enough, it's enough, it's enough hyping up. It's enough. We, you look. You can go online right now and find a million empowerment events. How much empowerment do you need before you move? Damn. How much do you need? How much fire does somebody have to put under you before you move and you know that the, there are things that, that you want to do? You have goals. You done wrote them down, talked about it, went to all the conferences, then sat on the front row, got the VIP bag, the swag bag over here, passed out your car, ain't followed up nobody. For what? Who are you fooling? 
In my book, I talk about it. you can fool a whole bunch of people, but you can't fool yourself. You walk around with you every day, and you be telling you stuff, and you be like, damn, can you just leave me alone about that? No, I ain't the only one. <laughs> no, you need to exercise. That 15 minutes, that 30 minutes to give yourself, and you don't do it. But all day long, 10 hours a day, I sent the email. Yes, I did. I did the project. Yes, I did. All day, all day long for other people that's undeserving. Some of these children undeserving and entitled. We ain't have it, so we got to buy it for them. But we're raising entitled children. But what are they entitled to if mama and daddy broke? What are they entitled to? Damn, you inheriting brokenness? We got enough of that. I ain't here today. I'm breaking that. I, I have broke that. How about that? It's gone. <clears throat> so when will we get tired of being in power and go ahead and move on it? And how much how much pushing a person got to do before you push yourself? Yes. My issue was I was just comfortable with the safe route. Like I was comfortable getting a check every two weeks. I was like, all right. I'm getting paid a decent salary. Like, it wasn't super balling, but it was decent for Atlanta. It was comfortable. So, should I roll the dice and start a business and it might not even work? And so, that was my issue. Gotcha. So, I had to get my job taken away mm -hmm. in order for me to do it. So, I think that's a lot of people fear. Mm -hmm. And that's how he moves us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't have enough sense to move yourself. Hey, come on, honey. You need to come on. You ain't move you over here. That's you ain't got no sense to do it for yourself. And that's something that I, when, in my prayers and my meditation, I always say, thank you, God, for being better to me than I've been to myself. Because he is. He helped you decide. That you know you need to bust this move. But you don't. Because of fear. Fear is something that does not exist but does. Because we created. You done fooled yourself like it's a boogeyman downstairs. It's all in your head. It's dark down there. It may look spooky. But it's boogeyman down there. But you done created this whole idea. False evidence. Fa false evidence. Appearing real. Ap appearing real. You hear me? I like that. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> no, we gonna take it though, because I've never heard it. Forget everything and run. Forget, Forget everything and run. Face everything and run. Yes. Yes. You have to sing though. I'm gonna give you my hand. But we will fool ourselves to believe something totally different. We really will. And what we end up doing is fooling ourselves out of something that can be an amazing, amazing, amazing situation. All if we was just to cross over, just to, if you just do it, just jump, just leap. What I like to say is shoot your shot. Shoot your shot. What you, what you got to lose? Either they going to say yes or they going to say no. And I'm the follow-up queen, baby. I will follow up with you every two weeks. Oh, hi, I was just talking about quick email. You don't have to be long. Quick. <clears throat> I'm going to follow up until they tell me no. Because until I get a no, the answer is what? There it is. During your life, what personal interests, talents, and skills have you shared? So, examples, providing services. Who has provided free services? Any type of free services. What kind? What kind of free services? Have you provided? Teaching. Teaching, okay. Yes, sir. Pro bono. Pro bono, yep. Okay. Mentorship as well as uh, company. Okay, anybody volunteer? Do we have any volunteers in the building? Okay, what do you volunteer doing or, or currently? Um, I'm a Girl Scout troop leader. Oh, I was in Girl Scouts. Awesome. We need y'all. I love Girl Scouts. That gave me the separation between, um, you know, being at home. And my mom was like, she ran her house, period. She was a, a drill sergeant. She ran her house. Uh, I respect her for that because she was a single parent, doing it by herself, two kids. And she kept us together. We were scared of mama. Totally. Totally scared of mama. <laughs> um, but... With, with uh, volunteering with Girl Scouts, it also gave me the sense of nature. Because my mama went food and went on nature. Yeah. So it just opens you up to different things, that exposure. And we didn't go far, but it was far enough. You know, sometimes if you just go to the end of the curve with a child and create a different experience, throw a kickball or whatever. I mean, I throw the kick a kickball or throw the ball. It creates a different experience. Anybody else volunteer? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sometimes I 
Okay. Uh, you always need it with a uh, uh, media, period. Okay. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, I volunteer for the uh, Georgia Department of Juvenile Justice. Uh, and most of the facilities are male facilities. I'm not sure the percentage, but if I had to guess, I would say that it's 75% to 25% facilities, uh, which is disturbing. Uh, most of the students that I've taught that get, got suspended over periods of time and the students that were at alternative school. So you're talking about a school that held 120 students. Out of 120 students, 90% of those students were black males. Out of that 90% of the students that were black males, 75% of them were special needs. Had IEPs, an individual education plan based on a disability. And most of the time with these disabilities, Parents get what? Check. Checks. So what do some parents keep doing? Producing. Oh wow. As long as their body working, they producing. And so you have multiple children. Uh, I've had case laws where a woman had seven children and four of them are in special needs. I had one parent to say, Oh, well, this one right here, girl, I'm finna drop. He's gonna have to get in this too, like it was a club. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is not uh, your book club. This is this is this is not students against drunk driving. <laughs> you know, so sometimes I've heard us black people say, "Oh, my child won't go to that type of school. It don't matter. They're gonna be in that type of world. They're gonna be in the world with them. So why not? If you can extend yourself beyond your own family, volunteer and reach out because." The services are needed, but few of us show up. We do a lot of talking and, 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 and keyboard gang banging. <laughs> but when it comes time to show up, it's not nobody showing out really. So we have to make sure we check ourselves in that category to be of assistance. Uh, sharing big ideas, uh, like let me, be a, let me pick your brain sessions. Do y'all have those type of friends or family members that me pick your brain? I'm the only one in here? Okay. Because I've had people to pick my brain, and I, and I actually allowed that for a period of time before I created my own brand where I charge people for it. Do you know why? Why should you, why should you provide some services for free at, at the beginning? It benefits you more than it benefits them. You're learning. You have the, you have the expertise, you know it, you have your credentials and you know all of that good stuff and it sounds all good and everything. The bossy educator, I'm okay, that's kind of fly, I'm okay. But what is she really talking about? Because this person don't know me because I'm just not starting these services. So what do I do? Provide some free services. The best referral you can get is word of mouth. Somebody talking about you, providing reviews about you, okay? Uh, saying things uh, that will lead to uh, other sales and also reviews that lead with, I'll definitely be back. Me with what? Huh? You said that was a little quick. <laughs> oh, no problem. I'm sorry. I do talk fast. So the last part of that was, and the reviews that end with, I will definitely be back. I will definitely be back. Yes. I was going to say with the free stuff, I know what I would do, we always expect to get stuff free. It's like Puff Daddy having this revolt summit in Atlanta next month. So I saw the ticket prices and everybody was like, Oh, he should, do it, he should do it for free. But I'm like, why should he do it for free? Like, if it was like a white person or something, you know, oh, this was, could have been, this is $1,000, but since it's a black person, oh, it's too much. Why don't we want to pay us? Yeah, I know. Why don't we want to pay us? Yeah. And now you go right across the street and pay him, but you won't come over here and pay him. Yeah. And another thing with the free thing, if you give somebody a service for free or at a discounted rate, they will never pay your normal rate. So when you give it to, like if you sell a song for $100 and you give it to me for a discount for 50, mm -hmm. I'm probably never gonna pay the $100. So but I'm that's what I this. learned in my business. So I just, I mean, But I'm gonna tell you this. If I have a potential client in front of me, see the thing about it is you have to think beyond the person that's in front of you. Yeah. That person has a lot of people standing behind them. So you go, so you go cut your nose off to spite your face? With one sale, where you can get this thousand sales, I'm gonna tell you how you can do that. So, for example, someone comes up to you and say, "Hey, what's your name again, sir?" Corey. 
Corey. Hey, Corey, uh, I want to buy your uh, touring package, but I only got $50, and I see your package is $100. No, I think that more so with family and friends, not that average customer. I know. Well, family and friends are not clients. Yeah. <laughs> they rarely support your business. Yeah. I've had people so I'm talking about don't know me from this chandelier and support me, email, follow up, call me, let me for coffee. Girl, I got this person I want you to meet. You got to do this, girl. Here's the card. You got to call them now. They're looking for your call in 15 minutes. Family member, I'm talking about one of my family members had was in the position. All she had to do was say this. Didn't do it. Just an example. So I don't look at friends and family members as customers. Not only that, there are billions of people in the world. Yeah, I didn't I know have, that at first. I had to Yeah, that. yeah, of course. Oh, we all do. Yeah. I did too. That's why I'm sharing it with you. Yeah. Absolutely. Because at first, I thought it was only my damn family and friends. Yeah. But damn, I said, hey, bye, nothing. What's going on? Let me go back and tweet my point, you know. Yeah. Then I thought about it. And I read a lot, too. I, I don't own the TV. I read a lot. So I'm reading this book, and it was like, your family and friends are not your let me change it up and 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 re reevaluate how I I imagine where my support should come from. Yeah. And a lot of people in our families are not our target audience anyway. If you know you charge an hour for doing videography, sir, why would you ask your friend Ray Ray? You know they only pay twenty five dollars an hour. That's not your target audience. Why are you asking them anyway? A lot of times we're in the room with the wrong people. Get in the room with your people and find something that'll work for you. You have to find your people. That's just like when the elephant's wrong, who do you see the elephant's fooling with? Who do you see the elephant's fooling with in the jungle, in the in the safaris? Who do the, who do the elephants run with? The elephants. Yeah, who do the lions run with? Lions. The lions. We're the only people that don't have that concept. Real talk. The Asians don't care nothing about who voting, who in, who the president, who, who about to be the mayor, who about to sign a bill, uh, who, who the tweet is from. The Asians don't have that conversation. And how I know is because I have Asian friends. And I'm around them. I'm intertwining their families. They don't have those conversations. Do you know what they do talk about, though? How the elephants go roll with the elephants. How the lions go roll with the lions. They roll it with their own. We're the only people that's divided. Think about it. So we have to ask us what's wrong with us. And a lot of the, a lot of the mess that we deal with is in our family. And about you being the boss of yourself. You having that relationship with you first. How can you have a relationship with other people and create businesses and create wealth if you don't have a relationship with yourself? You don't even know who you are. But you think people want to buy something from you. I told you they ain't buying your product, they buying you. So with the let me pick your brain sessions, tell you what happened by me giving free sessions. I created a brand. I was like, well, damn, I'm kind of good at this. I'm able to, they're able to provide me with a problem. I'm, I'm able to provide them with a solution. That's what the business is about. Figure out what you can solve. We got, it's enough hot wings. I'm serious, y'all. We got enough tennis shoe shops. Enough hair salons. I can get my hair braided a different day by a different person for 10 years and not go to nobody different. <laughs> Real talk. So we have to think of something outside the box. So because of the free sessions that I was giving parents, that I was giving friends and had issues with their children IEPs, I created a parent advocacy consulting session. That's the name of it, $99 an hour. I have under there a brief description. You pay on there, you schedule on there. I may be getting some situations right now. While I'm talking to you, they're scheduling. Automation. You don't have to be there for everything these days. Uh, Corey has told you he bored. He got business that's making money while he's sleeping. He at home playing Madden all day in the bed. He's trying to find some more money to make. Okay? This is one of the reviews, and this is what I'm talking about, about somebody else talking about you instead of you talking about you. Of course you're going to pump you up, right? But what about somebody else pumping you up? Do you, think, do you think I'm more believable or they're more believable? They are. 
Anytime I find myself in situations where I'm going to something, I always check the reviews. Like, oh, I wonder what they saying. How long is the wait? I tried um, Atlanta Breakfast Club. Have y'all been there? Okay, Atlanta Breakfast Club is over on uh, Ivan Allison and across the street from the aquarium. Yes, delicious, impeccable food, outstanding customer service, black on. We can do it. When you see there needs to be an adjustment made, speak up. One of the chapters in my book, open your damn mouth. Say something. Nothing can get better until we say something about it. You know why the white folk neighborhood be straight? And you know how I know? Let me tell you this story. They go call baby, send emails all day long on, on uh, Redact. <laughs> I ain't lying. We, I called at uh, 8 a.m. when I was on my break, and then I called at 12 noon, and I called again, but I had to call. Because they want the problem to be what? Solved. Solved. Why keep on driving on raggedy streets when you can call and, and, and say your piece? Or don't complain <laughs> about it. Pick one. Just like I was telling you how God uses either a bridge or a, a footstool, pick one. He going to use you either way. So don't, don't be at the, at the store and I say, girl, your nails pretty. Where'd you get your nails on it? Girl, you know, I don't even remember. You just left the damn nail shop. <laughs> Why not say, girl, I went to Keisha. She's right there on the corner of 11th and 13th Street. Uh, her and Sally are really good. Here's uh, uh, the information. Girl, here they go to their Instagram page right here. Why not? How is it going to hurt you? And then what ends up happening is their girl named Keisha that you wouldn't refer nobody to, you go back and try to schedule your nail appointment. Keisha is booked in business. See, God will bless, bless people because you think that you cut out their blessing. That, you ain't the only person to go through. So why not be a bridge? <clears throat> Provide the connection so the next time that girl see you, Girl, I went to Keisha, girl, my nails so good. Also, I want to tell you about my friend. She having a networking event. You should come through. I know you sell those earrings, right? Boom. All because of a referral. You have to learn how to work your referrals and work the people in the room and understand that everybody has somebody in their network that can help you solve a problem that you have, answer a question. But this is what this review says. <clears throat> the services Tyra provided was amazing. There is so much unknown in parenting and Tara made the IEP process much easier in understanding for me and my son. I would recommend her advocacy to all parents in need of an IEP. Her sessions are detailed and informative. Those are her words. So, I can tell you, but I would rather show you, but the invoice comes first. <laughs> Let me tell you that. I can rather tell you, but I can show you, but the invoice comes first. Because I'm about business. It's nothing personal. And there's something else we have to do. Do what? Take the emotions out of it. Right. Nobody owes you anything. If don't nobody want to buy your product, it's, up to, it's, it's, it's for you to determine why they don't want to buy it. And what is it about you? If you go to, uh, I teach a class called How to Be in Like a Boss. If you go to an event and you have a pop-up shop and you just sit behind your table looking all cute and thinking that you, you know, you a star and you a celebrity. Even the celebrities get out of me and I ain't impressed with them or anything, but I'm just saying, are you a celebrity yet? You are a celebrity. Did you know that? You were born one. It's up to you to act like it. A celebrity is nothing but a person that's celebrated. Don't you celebrate yourself? Stop, boss about it. Think about the added value you have, you've contributed to the overall success of your circle of family and friends. How can you use this added value to benefit you and your namesake? Oftentimes we're giving out stuff for free that we should be charging for. At some point, the free period is over. Let me repeat that. At some point, the free period is over. You have to add value to what it is that you are providing. I heard you say that you were the financial company. I remember it because I love I love how people name themselves something. Like, I'm the bossy educator. You'll remember that before you remember Tara Seals. The bossy educator is going to stick. Yours was? Financial Suicide Prevention Council. Financial Suicide Prevention. He's trying to prevent you from doing what? Committing suicide to your finances. 
See how you understand what it is? I hate going by places and it'll just say boogaloo. We ain't gonna say boogaloo. We ain't gonna say boogaloo. We're gonna switch out. We're gonna switch that. We switch that up. Because boogaloo straight. I'm cool, boogaloo. So I don't wanna say that. But let's just say, because boogaloo makes sense of what they do. So let's switch it up. Let's just say if it says BAMs on it. Well, damn, what y'all selling in BAMs? Then you don't have a subtitle. So I'm supposed to pull up in the, look, pull up, see what y'all got, because you might told me what y'all got from the street. So what am I gonna do as a consumer? Keep Not calm. A confused buyer never buys. Right. You gotta tell folks what you're selling. <clears throat> Period. I'm the bossy educator. I do keynote speaking, workshops, consulting. What you need? K through 12 experience, certified. Give them the words, those pop words that's going to make you pop. Financial, suicide, suicide prevention. prevention. See what I'm saying? You're trying to prevent some. I don't want to commit no suicide, but I need them finances. See what I'm saying? Anybody else have a, a title like that? Like a cute little ring? You call yourself something? You say something? You're going to come up with something. I'm going to come up with it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You look like you got some. Come on. You ain't got no money? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, okay. what is it? Uh, US uh, Special Ops. US Special Ops? Yeah. Okay. So, do you have a like a, a, a name for yourself? Like, he, he's the. Uh, not yet? Not yet. Got, okay. Somewhere. But come up with something. Let me hey, tell y'all. Hey, let me raise my hand. I came up with photojournalists. So, if you want to help me. Spend that more, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, because because this is the thing about it. We remember we remember stuff like that. You know, you gotta you gotta make sure that you are rememberable. You know what I mean? Some people you don't remember, you like what's that from? They ain't give you they ain't drop no knowledge. You don't remember how they look, you don't remember any of their visuals. My my logo. Why do we have these logos that you can't read? The bossy educator, there it is, the bossy educator.com, clean, black, and white to the point. The book, clean to the point. Words that you can read in the book. Why do we create this small writing? People are messing up their eyes these days because of computers, because we're on electronics all the time. You got to make it big. I call, I call it, I call it, I call it meet you where you are. I got to meet you where you are. If I'm teaching you, my students in my classroom, I have some that are BR. That means they're reading on a kindergarten level, but they're in the fifth grade. I gotta meet him where he is. I can't go in there talking about some big extravaganza. What? <laughs> Maybe I can start out with the park. I gotta meet you where you are. So that's very important. So anybody can add benefits to your value because of what you are selling. And leave something for your namesake. And I'm gonna tell y'all something else. Once we decide to leave something, situate your shit, please. Because black families are tired of divided up, figuring out, arguing over, uh, killing each other over your stuff. Your stuff is really only important to you. I don't want to repeat that one more time. It's coming out of the people. Your stuff is only important to you. When you leave, ain't nobody really selling your stuff. That's why it's your stuff. Anybody got any questions about that? <laughs> Please organize your stuff. Because I've seen so many black families leave namesakes, and oftentimes I hear this. I ain't leaving enough for them to fight over. You're right. But they can't fight over it if they know who's who what go to who. We don't want to be collecting no collection plate or doing no GoFundMe. Get you some insurance. You got an insurance man here, please. Anybody? Several. There we go. Insurance lady too. Thank you. These are your connects right here in the building. Like I said earlier, you don't know who's in the room that has the answers to the question that you have in your mind. Utilize the resources. So make sure, so the added value that you that you been, that you can benefit from is anything that you can create from your business that you currently do. What is something that you're that you're thinking about creating in your line of business that you haven't done already, but you know you want to sell this product? Anything? You. I'm going to leave off by my practice. Is there anything you want to add? 
that you know if you leave it, it'll be something good, like an insurance, like a book of insurance is good. Well, I mean, I have, I have that. Mm -hmm. um, nothing that I'm trying to, because right now I'm, I, I'm sort of have that kind of set, and I'm okay. entering into other things that will gotcha. pull into it by saying my. Uh, but you're constantly growing and figuring out things, oh, and if yeah, the product yeah, doesn't yeah, work from scratch, you start over. Absolutely. Gotcha. <laughs> Also, trademarks is something that you can leave. I have the Bossy Educator trademark. Bossy is the Bossy Does trademark. Take care of your paperwork. Take care of your paperwork. Say I was true story. I would rather spend money on a trademark instead of going out buying a new bag. Nothing, nothing gives me more hype than a piece of paper. I'm like, damn, okay. Ooh, we got approved. And you have an attorney that does that. Another automated system. Let me let me explain something to y'all. Money equal automation. Can y'all repeat after me? Money. Money equals equals automation. Automation. You know why? When you have the right people in place, when you have that five CPA, my CPA is bad. I'm scared of. I'm scared of. I'm scared of two things: the IRS and Jesus. I'm God. Okay. Some of y'all know the difference. Mm, picky. But real talk. She fired. And she gonna set you straight. At the end of the day, I pay her to get things done so I can do other stuff. You can't do everything. But once you start making money, you can pay for your other stuff. Okay, I made this money right here. Now. Okay, it's a bet. And I don't call it spending money, I like to call it circulating money. That's what we gotta learn how to do with black with in our black community. Circulate the dollar. It only goes four to six hours with us. The Chinese been 28 days or something like that. See what I mean by the Asians? I'll be over there learning all kinds of stuff. Okay, so y'all do what to do what? Oh, okay, that's how y'all save money on there. But she like, oh, Tyra, you so crazy. I don't care. I'm getting all the knowledge. Her daddy, her daddy saves money like nobody's business. He's probably one of the most frugal men I've ever met in my life. And my grandfather was very frugal. Worked at a, work for, worked at a uh, warehouse for 39 years. 39 years, but he owned properties. He owned the block. The block that he lived on, he owned eight out of the 12 homes. So everybody was like, oh, your granddaddy owned the block. Grandpa owned the block. And when he passed, he had enough house. He had six children. Five of them were living at the time that he passed. He had enough houses to pass out each one to them and have some left over. So he, you, and you'll hear about him in my book, he's my superhero. My daddy did damage a long time ago. I tell y'all about that. But he's my superhero because anytime <clears throat> you're born in the in the thirties and you have six children and you write checks for all of them to go to college, whether some of them completed or not, it, they had the opportunity. See, oftentimes the opportunity is there, but you don't go after it because you are lazy or scared. Usually, it's, it's nothing outside of that. Because even if it's a money thing, put by, uh, uh, it's an it's a, it's a, uh, app called Acorn. A-C-O-R-N, Acorn. Take the money out your account. If it's $5 a week, $10 a week, you do that at uh, J.R. Creepy, at it Boogaloo. Mm -hmm. Right? Real talk. So why not put that money to the side when you can Opposed to being in a situation like I really want to buy my trademark, but I ain't got no money. But you got, but you getting dressed to go out. Is that bossy? You might even stay at the house, and read you a book. Yeah. So let's go to the next slide. Now, activating the entrepreneurial instinct, we have to activate what is already in us. What have you done or started doing that is activated? Your entrepreneurial instincts. You want to start a new business. What have you already done? Um, coming to networking events, building my brand, get my name out so I can get um, referrals. Okay, and how do you do that? Do you uh, pass out business, physical business cards, electronic business cards? Do you give them your Instagram account? <laughs> do you have your Instagram name on your card? What you got? Next? Um, I got business cards, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, Facebook, and then after I introduce myself and meet those people, I then follow up. Awesome. Anybody else would like to add to that? How have, how are you uh, how have you activated your entrepreneurial instinct? So she started a new business. We have Corey that's he about to start something new as well. He don't know what it is yet. He gonna figure it out. 
<laughs> so what have you started? What have you started doing to activate your entrepreneurial instincts? You're wanting to go to the next level and do something different outside of what you're already doing in order to do what? Create more revenue. Yes. So I started doing this um, organizing company outside of what I'm already doing. So like basically, I found that I have OCD, <laughs> um, where like I just love keeping certain things like in a certain way. And there's a show that got really popular on Netflix called Tidying Up with Marie Kondo. And so pretty much what she was already producing in terms of like taking everything out of like closets or like out of the kitchen or like reorganizing it, but not doing it herself, actually like showing people how to organize it. Right. Um, I basically started doing that. So I started offering like to my family and my friends like um, me, my services, just going back and forth to Charlotte to help them organize their rooms. And I started taking pictures of it to create a portfolio. Um, and so when wow. I started doing it for free, people started paying me anyways. So now I just gotta figure out like what I wanna do with like pricing and stuff like that. But I'll still do like maybe like five or six more houses or different rooms for free. Um, just to continue to get more pictures. Yeah, and but, to also get the experience too, because yeah. I'm sure you learn something new every time. Like, I'm like, doing it. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. this is exactly how I already clean. So it's like, and she there just did it before I did. So. Right. So you <laughs> so actually use I, that. Yeah. yeah. One of your and talents. it's funny because like I, um, the time that I was like visiting a friend, she was just like, oh, like, have you ever seen this? <clears throat> like, you know, this is like how your house looks or whatever. And, and like literally as she was like going through the show, we watched the whole season and she was just like saying, this is definitely you Liz. And I was like, you're right. So that weekend I ended up going home and I um, practiced at my mom's house and like I've done my cousin's closets and like, oh my but yeah, it's a really cool experience. Yeah. But it's like, even the handwriting thing, I want to do something with that too. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen people um, just like write thank you cards for yes. people like weddings and stuff. So that'd be another thing that I'll get into, but I, um, Joined in on Fiverr, but yes. I didn't really get any hits on that, so I'll try to like do something else. But, yeah. yeah, well that's amazing. And those are using all of your talent, skills, and abilities that probably something you never thought of. Right. Like you said, it's been categorized as OCD, but you've turned you turned that into a profit. Right. That's amazing. So now let's talk about it. Uh, the identifying key barriers. What are some key barriers professional? or personal that are preventing you from monetizing your skills. So what are some things that's like in your way, you think, that's keeping you from monetizing your skills? Lack of These barriers, lack of knowledge, okay. Time. So let's start with lack of knowledge. I like that one. Why do you lack knowledge? <laughs> uh, but, but we do like, but we do like knowledge. Oh well, yeah, I can say um, mm -hmm. in a new venture that I'm adding to yeah. my business. Yeah. Um, I'm just studying on it. Right. You know, just taking the time. Like when I go home, I just study every single thing that I'm into. Like I watch a couple YouTube videos on the subject, and I go to the next one. I watch a couple of this subject. And I go to the next cool. Next one. What type of business you going into? Well, I've been in business for. I'm a, uh, my new company is called Digital Reach Media and I'm branching out into social media marketing because I want to retain my clients longer after I give them the video. I don't want to just give video out there. Smart. So I want to, you know, That's get smart. more monthly <coughs> charging, high, different quality of clients. A residual client. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's what I'm using. You know. Awesome. Okay, so knowledge and time. And time is something that I think that we have it, we just don't utilize it well. If tomorrow you write down everything that you're doing, you'll see how much time you've, you've wasted. Mm -hmm. Then compile that time and put it into a block of time that you have now available because you're not wasting this time. It, it will organize your life. And even outside of a calendar, like the IC project that I was telling you about when you're doing follow-up, a calendar is a calendar. It's telling you what you got to do, when you got to be there, who you're going to connect with, whatever. But not the follow-up. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, that's where our business is lacking, the follow-up. <clears throat> that's one of the barriers that's preventing us from monetizing skills. I called this lady to do a uh, balloon arch. Okay? She, she popping on Instagram, you know, people do further. And that's another thing. When, you, when I refer you, that means that your name on my name. 
Mm-hmm. When I refer you, that means your name on my name. So when somebody, when I refer, when, when somebody refers somebody to me and say, hey, Tara, this lady, she wants to do a fundraiser for her school. She wants to get the Hamilton Wildcats earrings. Here's her information. I'm going to make sure I take extra care of this client because somebody warm transferred that person. Not saying that the person is cold transferred, the person I had no connection with. But this person warm transferred. So they're, 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 they respect me and trust me that much that I'm going to take care of their client. Because if you don't take care of that client, that person can be looking at the other person like, well, dog, why you refer to her to me? She ain't even called me back. Yep. This been a week ago. So it looks bad when you don't do that. That's business etiquette, period. But make sure that you follow up because oftentimes the money is in the follow-up, y'all. Yep. The money is in the follow-up. And oftentimes, I think uh, Elizabeth was saying earlier about how she would put those business cards wherever. Now she's compiling them and she's creating her list. And that is a follow-up. Even if you're not, even if it's somebody that you may not be connected with now, I may send out something in one of my newsletters that you're interested in. And if you're not interested in it, you shouldn't stop it there. What should you do? Pass it on to somebody else. Something else that's wrong with us. Scared somebody else will get a dollar more. So Hell, they may not know what to do with their dollar more. And that's important. That's the most important part. What you do with it. If I'm spending money with your black business, you shouldn't be spending money with these white folks in four hours. I'm being honest with you. You need to learn how to circulate, not spend, circulate the money. And stop being afraid to somebody else. Well, shoot, I don't want to pass his video. I get some services on because I ain't got my money yet to buy mine. And shoot, he might show he is on his front five. So, what's yours is yours. Can't nobody beat you but you. And you beat you when you're not referring somebody. So, when you get an email and it's something that you may not be able to use, I think of three people that could possibly use the information. If they use it, they use it. If they don't, they don't. But guess what? They will appreciate the fact that you provided knowledge. You passed it on. You created a bridge of information to give to the other person. So don't be afraid to pass on information. I don't trip on none of that. You want to know why I got my hair braided? I'm going to give you the phone number. Go up there and do what you do, baby. You ain't me. I'm going to wear these braids. You can't wear them like I rock them. I'm me, you, you. That's your advantage. You are your advantage. Do you know that? The advantage that you have that there is not another Nayella. Nayella. There it is. If there's not another Elena. Mm, there's not another. Asia. There's not another. Chris. There's not another. There it is. So what are we waiting on? Be confident when you pass on a name. Be confident when you talk about your business. I don't like talking. Look, I don't do business with folks. Well, I'm so and so and so. <laughs> Because if you ain't proud of it, why am I going to be proud to pass you on? Why slut the vegan popping? Why are they standing in line at 3 o'clock in the middle of the day when it's 3 degrees outside? Not because the sound is so fine. It's not that good. <laughs> Let me be honest with you. It's an impossible burger with some special sauce. What makes her special? Her sauce. You got to add some sauce to it, baby. Yours is not different until you add some sauce on it. That's why she got a line. She got crinkle cut fries with some large type seasons out of some of them. Can we not go home and make that? Can you not provide, can you not provide a, a, a vendor for the french fries and the seasons out? Can you not? But you ain't got the special sauce. And that's the reason why ain't nobody shopping with you. That's the reason why ain't nobody supporting you or uh, referring you. Because you ain't got no sauce. And especially nowadays, you got to really make sure that you stand out and do something that's different to make your brand pop. Even if it's unique and don't nobody have it. Somebody can get it and figure it out or something, you know, twist it, right? So we have to make sure that we have that sauce. So when we identify and key barriers, really we have to understand that there are no barriers. Barriers don't exist. We create them. I ain't got time. Why don't we have time? You sit here and uh, looked at uh, Instagram for 30 minutes. 
You could have read a book for 30 minutes and got information. Because y'all know all on there is what? Red sheet, and, you know. It's, you have to really fit these days to feel it, right? So we have to make sure that whatever barrier that we say is there, we have to understand that it's really not, and we put it there. But what are we going to do to solve the problem to make sure that it's removed from there? So let's talk about today. This is homework. Uh, it is a graphic organizer, and I want you to name who is the boss, and I am because. What you'll do is you'll list all of your industry services and other products you think would align with your personal interests, talents, and skills. So for example, if you know that you want to open your, what type of business? Um, I want to open my own like blog uh, just to be able to educate first-time homeowners on how the process goes. Awesome. Yes, girl, that's amazing. So you could be the homeowner queen, a homeowner guru, a homeowner boss or something, right? So you'll be, telling, you'll be giving them information about everything dealing with homeowners. So everything that relates to a homeowner or how you could assist a homeowner. A good one is uh, with a realtor, for example. A lot of my products are used. I have pillows that we create, and they have lo you can put your uh, custom logo on and stuff like that. But that's the way that as Naila, Naila, um, as a realtor, she can provide a thank you basket or a a uh, housewarming basket. She puts all types of products in that basket in order to welcome this homeowner. So it may be, so what type of stuff will go in that basket? Think about that. Candles. Candles, yes. Scented candles. Containers. Containers, mm -hmm. pillows, mugs, mm -hmm. a knife set, picture frame, mm -hmm. clothes hangers, those type of things. So she would want to make sure that she puts everything on her list that has something to do with real estate. So anything that you can think of that has something to do with real estate and how you can make that experience better mm -hmm. and consult them on it outside of just telling the home part of it, mm -hmm. how, to, how to pack your house, who to use to pack your house. You could be the, um, the middle person between that company and your client. And you will just start charging them a consulting fee for that. Girl, I can, I can pack your house and move everything for you. You don't have to worry about anything. Just come and close on your deal. Boom. So you will connect them with pods. You'll call Pod, set everything up, have the, the movers to come. You'll connect with, um, what is it, Transact, that is one of the 18-wheeler um, the, uh, companies that will come and move long distance. You will do that. So she doesn't have to do any of that. So you're now consulting her on her moves. Okay? Um, <clears throat> with homeowners, with your blog, you may be able to actually uh, uh, have people that are real estate agents on your blog to advertise themselves because everything you're talking about is about home ownership. Mm -hmm. So now you will allow her to be featured on your blog so she can talk about her services, you connect with her. So then people that she has that are new homeowners, she can be like, well look, this is the person that you would want to talk to about this while she's helping them consult on moving. Mm -hmm. You figure out one thing and make it work for you, one piece of it, and then you branch out. You know, sometimes we are uh, Jacks and Jills of all trades, and ain't Jacks and Jills of none of the sons. Y'all know people like that? Okay. And when they introduce themselves, it's like, now what you do, now, girl? Because you name about 10 things. Baby, hit me two, two. Give, hit me two. I always say, hit me two. Okay? Because really, I'm not going to remember anything else after that. Okay? So make sure you all do the graphic organizer if you choose, but you will organize all of your industry services and products that would align, and then you'll go from there as far as figuring out what it is that you want to do in order to monetize your skill. Now these are some resources. Have you all heard of Linktree before? Yes. Okay, awesome. So with Linktree, But with Linktree, what it does is it allows you to have a link in your Instagram profile that links you to other links instead of you using that one link. Any, does anybody does anybody use it already? Okay, so I'm gonna show you how it works. So go to go to b o d y d e c o r boutique b o u t i q u e and the number one, do y'all see it? I'm sorry, B-O-D-Y-D-E-C-O-R, Boutique, B-O-U-T-I-Q-U-E, in the number one, and then click the link that is in my profile. And what'll pop up for you is the link tree. 
I'm using this for free. This is free, y'all. And you have your different links under there. So now you can link them to your event. You can link them to your tour. You can link them to an upcoming tour. You can link them to a class that you have, a free class, or a free ebook that you have, okay? Also, you have blip billboards. Who in here said they did something with billboards? Liz. Liz. Liz, gotcha. Yeah. This is blip billboards. I don't know if y'all have heard of blip billboards or not, but it's an economical way to have a billboard. So that will be an amazing uh, resource for you to use for your business. Project management is the IC project. I referred to that a few times when we were talking. ICproject.com. Uh, you want to learn a new skill virtually, you can use Skillshare. Udemy or Skillsoft. Podcast. Who has a podcast? I'm about to start one. It's just, I've been in that radio. Okay, okay, cool. I'm about to get ready to start a podcast. So I'm working on the cover, you know, all this type of stuff first, but I'm ready to get started. I'm really excited about it too. And I'll be talking about everything, relationships, education, and business. Um, and that's going to be called the Boss Nation Podcast. So you can use the Anchor app. The Anchor app. It's free. Uh, I have it downloaded on my phone. It's actually very, I mean, it uh, projects very well. You can stop it, start it, edit it, everything. It is right on your phone. Anchor app for the podcast. Saving for personal or business project. Acorns. Save money real quick. Just put money away that you're not really paying any attention to. At all. $10 a week, $20 a week, $5 a week. You can put it in monthly. If you come into some money, you can put it in there. And then you also have your stocks on the app as well. So you can look at all the information. Acorns. And these are the ones that I use. Not saying you have to use the ones I use. There are several other uh, options. Another one is called Stash. Have y'all heard of Stash? That's one too. Also, I forgot to put this one up here. But if you are short on money and you need to borrow $200 because you want to buy your flyers for your upcoming event at the Gathering Spot Club. <laughs> and... Uh, you want, a, but you don't have that two hundred dollars right now. You can use the earning app. If I heard of the earning app, E A R N I N E A R N I N, and you can put your location in there for where you work, and you'll earn you'll earn money as you go to your location that you can get off your next check. Not for jobs though, <laughs> for trademarks, okay, for business purposes. And if you like me, if you have a business, your employer it should be your what? Seed Your big, who, who said, who said, who, what'd you say? Seed money. That's seed money, all day. Your employer is your investor. That's your business partner. Yeah. Good morning. And I go in so happy. Good morning. On time. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? What do you do? <laughs> So, um, make sure you keep that in mind. But it's called the earning app. Has anybody heard of the earning app before I said that today? Some I, people? I, I've heard it on uh, the commercials. Yeah, it's the bomb. I have a friend that used it for, she was in a very tight situation. And she was able to use the earning app. And it got her out of it. They deposited the money to her account with no hassle, nothing like that. <clears throat> also, when it comes to savings accounts, <clears throat> you should have a savings account in your bank, but at other banks too. So like the online uh, savings account is Ally, A-L-L-Y. -L -L that I call the savings account that you have with your bank, that's your side piece. Your savings account with your other bank, that's your main piece. Okay? Because what happens, you send that money every month or however often you check your account, right? You look at it like, oh, should I got the book me out the dog? Go back to book that flight? No. Mm -hmm. So that's why that's the side piece. So just leave it in there for a buffer just in case something pops. Because you're not going to be able to get that money out of Ally in a few days. So you do need to keep some type of cushion in there. But just make sure that you know the difference between the side piece and the main piece. Hello? All right. <laughs> and graphics, Fiverr. Liz uh, mentioned that earlier. Fiverr. Y'all. Y'all. Fiverr is, is on my payroll. I made payroll. Mine's too. Real talk, y'all. And people talk about it because they don't put in the work. You can't just go in there and click on the first person you see and buy it. No, you have to look at the reviews. Did I tell you about we talked about the reviews? Look at the reviews, see what they're saying. The person is going to tell you if it's something that they really enjoy about the person or not. And they're going to also, with the reviews, they're going to uh, put emphasis on those main things. Delivery, time of delivery, uh, cost efficient, 
Uh, I've used this person time and time again. Those are some things that you look at when you're finding somebody on Fiverr. Also, narrow it down. Don't do like a new seller if this person don't have any reviews yet. You don't know what's up. It's just like going to an Airbnb. If they don't have a review yet with Airbnb, I'm not saying that. I ain't going to be your guinea pig. I don't know what you got for <laughs> So I always look at your reviews for the best uh, experience because oftentimes that's where your answers lie. Okay. <clears throat> now, I give gifts, and this, this is uh, these are some gifts from uh, Body Day Core Boutique. If you go to Instagram, I said Body Day Core Boutique, uh, The Bossy Educator, if you go to Instagram and follow me at The Bossy Educator, and I will be giving out some $5 coupons for the website as well as one book. And I'll obviously autograph that for you tonight. And it comes with a complimentary bookmark as well. I always remember when you provide somebody with a product, you give them everything they need with the product. I shouldn't come to your wing spot and can't get no nap. And don't serve no fries if you ain't got no ketchup. So that's why I'm providing you with a bookmark. Just a few examples of some of the things that I've learned to do over time. So, have somebody followed yet? Let me go on here and pick. Well, I can't because I'm recording you. Oh, you can't because you're recording? Okay, we automatically put your name in the head. How about that? Okay. Okay, so we have American. Okay, gotcha. Let me see if I can. And. 